Hey guys, who's my here back with another video and in this video today we're going to be doing another installment of my redesign series. Where we take a character from one series and put them into a different theme or setting such as cyberpunk or steampunk and the other variation to this is where we can take a character from one story and put them into another story as if they lived in that world of that story. This one, as many of you can tell from the title of this video, um, we're drawing Asta as a Harry Potter wizard. I know, I know, this one's completely left field, but I thought it would be fun since they're both magic and wizard settings. And uh, I know that Harry Potter has really nothing to do with the anime fandom per se, even though I feel like a lot of the anime fandom probably still do like Harry Potter. And I feel like Harry Potter is definitely one of those uh, fantasy series that broke into the mainstream and started to become much more widely accepted. But yeah, even though it doesn't have anything to do with anime, I thought it would be fun to, you know, bring it into the anime sphere by doing a merger of Black Clover and uh, Harry Potter talk a little bit about this series and stuff like that both of the series uh, as the video goes on but real quick I wanted to touch base on the illustration real quick the very first thing I had to make sure I looked up was the Hogwarts uniform so I knew I was drawing it at least accurately enough if I if I'm not completely accurate here I'm sorry guys I'm sorry <laughs> And uh, as I was looking up this reference, I ended up seeing this Hogwarts scarf that I was like, hey, this actually looks kind of nice. And I clicked on it and I thought it looked cool. And uh, I went on my phone um, to go scroll through Instagram. This is in a span of like two minutes. And bam, I got hit with an ad of that exact same scarf. And I mean, I know Google does this and uh, knows their search history so they can um, display more accurate ads you know for you based on your search history but man that happened really fast <laughs> yeah so I uh, thought I'd share that little story with you but uh, back to what we were talking about and for the next step I wanted to make sure to choose which wizard house Asta would be put in so that way I would be able to put the crest on the design and stuff like that for most series that have this kind of inspirational setting and inspirational main character, I feel like they have that one group or, you know, house or guild that is, you know, about being a hero or something like that. And um, that is definitely what Gryffindor is is like. So, I, I mean, I decided to put him in Gryffindor. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Um, any of you who know about Harry Potter, what house do you think he would be in? Um, I'm definitely not thinking he would be in Hufflepuff. Um, <laughs> and I don't really see him being put in Slytherin, you know, that's completely Sasuke's game, you know, and Orochimaru. <laughs> Yeah, I put him in Gryffindor, and uh, really, if you guys do uh, think he should be in any other house, or if you do agree, definitely let me know in the comments section below. But anyways, back to the illustration. After deciding which house he would be in, and already knowing what the uniform looked like, it was pretty much just me flushing out the pose and all that stuff. And uh, in a second here, I decided that his head was a little bit too small, and I erased it and ended up making it bigger. I cut out the a whole redrawing portion of that because it just I didn't want you guys to have to watch me redraw the head all over again. I kind of wanted the video just to be, you know, smooth and consistent. Unlike if it was digital, I would have just selected his head and made it bigger. But th these are the lessons in traditional that are really nice because um, having to do that was such a pain that I remember it very, very well. So I'm going to be paying more attention to the size of the head, to the body, a lot more when I draw because of that mistake I made and there wasn't just some really quick, easy fix for it. We are now in the inking stages, and the pen that I'm using is the same pen that I've been using in my past few videos. The Zebra G pen is the dip ink pen, and the ink that I'm using with it is the India Black Ink. And uh, the pencil I used earlier is the same pencil I use all the time, is the disposable Bic Mechanical Pencil. And the paper I'm using is a smooth bristleboard paper, although I do feel like this page was defective or something. <laughs> Because uh, when I was inking with this pen, it was uh, bleeding a lot more and it was a lot more scratchy in a sort of bad way uh, than all the other pages that I've used from that specific book that I've been taking them out of. So that was actually kind of frustrating and annoying because up close, 
it doesn't look as good as I would like it to. It didn't really like lay onto the paper as nicely as I would have liked it. But uh, it is what it is. And I'm about to use a Sakura Micron to do some of these straight lines because even though you can do straight lines with a ruler and a Zebra G pen, it's just a lot less stressful doing it with those. Because when you're actually using the Zebra G pen with a ruler, um, the ink on the edges of that nib can end up leaking down underneath the ruler and creating a really mean looking mess. And uh, I mean, there's a way to do it. You pretty much just ink at an angle. You do the straight line at an angle on the ruler, but I didn't really want to do that. I had some soccer microns and I was like, just like, I'm going to use these. <laughs> I am very low on ink on every single one of those pens I have now and uh, that's why I went over those lines with the G pen after I had made them. Now, one thing I didn't talk about with this design was the incorporation of the swords and the wizard book that's from Black Clover that you know Asta has. Um, I didn't really want to give him a wand because you know Asta's thing is about not having any magic. He has anti-magic and I was thinking about changing up his swords but I, th I thought about it and I just decided to go with the swords that he had in the beginning of the series and I haven't gotten far enough to see the brand new swords that he has or else I might have used those ones but um, they used the ones from the beginning of the series and uh, I, th I thought it would be fun because I didn't want to take away that, you know, the anti-magic swords from him and give him a wand because Asta's whole thing is he doesn't have magic. And even in, you know, the Harry Potter realm, technically he would just be a muggle, all right? <laughs> So I decided to keep the swords in the book from the world he's from because if he was a muggle, um, yeah, he, he wouldn't really be in, you know, Hogwarts. As for the Gryffindor crest, I put it on his headband where the Black Bulls crest typically is. Now just to go into a little chat about Harry Potter for a second, um, I'm not the hugest fan of Harry Potter, but I really do like it. As for me, I pretty much just watch the movies, and I know whoever has read the books always say that um, the books are way better than the movies and all that stuff like that, but I'm not really in a position to talk about that. But I do really like the movies and the atmosphere it gives off and that theme song that I would totally hum right now if I didn't know YouTube would come at me and be like, yo, copyright claim, ah! <laughs> Well, I mean, technically it wouldn't be YouTube coming at me, but you get my gist. But yeah, one of my fondest memories of watching the movies really is that music, and it just plays in my head, and when I was actually binge-watching the movies one time, every time I would cook something, for some reason I would just start humming that theme song for no apparent reason. I would do it really loud in my apartment, too. But yeah, they did really good on the soundtrack for that, because it really helps with the atmosphere and everything, and as I'm sure many of you agree, um... Music and stuff like that can really affect the atmosphere of a movie or an anime and it can make it 10 times better if it's already good. Which uh, makes me very sad for Black Clover. Not specifically the music itself, but the animation. I don't know why they did that to Black Clover. It's so sad. I know it's not complete trash, but it's pretty trashy compared to the manga. <laughs> But anyways, um, to get back to the illustration a little bit, I already blocked in all the blackouts with uh, the pencil, and then I started to go in and, you know, put in all the blackouts with the G pen and my brush pen. This one was definitely a little difficult for me when I was going into it. I didn't have any clear mind on how I wanted the shades to be and the highlights but it ended up working out and the pencils definitely helped me kind of flush out how I wanted it to look. But it, it definitely uh, was a stressful process because I didn't know how it was going to look once it was completely blacked out. And it turned out being a little bit better than, than I thought because I was definitely being uh, pessimistic when I was doing this illustration. <laughs> As, uh, for most of the illustration, I was not liking how it was coming out until around this point, actually, I started liking the illustration a lot more. It started to look a lot cleaner, a lot nicer, started to feel like it was coming together. And uh, I, I feel like that's been an ongoing theme with me recently is 
I, I don't really like how it's coming out in the pencil stages. Um, and uh, that's just a portion of me being, you know, not as confident in my line work, which means I just need to do a lot more conscious drawing and practicing in those specific areas that I'm not feeling as confident in right now. It is very easy to lose things that you have learned in drawing if you don't brush up on it enough. Which is actually the whole theme of a video I want to create at some point, um, talking about my experience with uh, forgetting things that I've learned and how important practice is. But uh, one thing I want to say is I'm very interested in seeing how this video will turn out because a lot of my redesign series had to do with taking a character from one series and then I ended up always putting them as a Black Clover Magic Knight. And I don't know why that's what most of my redesign series has been so far, but one thing I haven't done was one for Asta from that series that I was using. <laughs> So I'm interested to see if people are just interested in the characters I was redesigning or if they're interested specifically in the thing I was redesigning it into or if it was just a merger of the both. I know it would be a merger of the both, but I wanted to see exactly how well this one does with just Asta. It is kind of a coin toss with it being Harry Potter and whatnot because it's not on its, you know, hypest train right now. Hypest train. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll see how it turns out. But definitely, if you guys uh, want to see more stuff of Asta, all you Black Clover fans, if you want to see more Black Clover stuff, definitely comment and uh, leave a like. Definitely helps out the video and uh, will make me want to do more, more videos because I am uh, currently trying to catch up with Black Clover. I'm, I'm like super, super behind and I know it got like super epic. And, oh gosh, I, I really want to catch up. And I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Now, these swords. These swords were super fun. I was so excited to actually do these swords because they were, they're, they're just huge blank spots in the canvas. And I knew when adding it in, it was going to put in a lot more character to the illustration. And I didn't know how it was going to turn out, how they were going to turn out, because they're like just like massive blotches of hatch out, hatchings hatchings hatchlings no just massive blotches of hatch marks and the, it was such a big portion of the page i had to push down kind of hard with the pen but yeah that was definitely really fun in any case if you guys want to help support what i do on this channel help support my arts as you guys should check me out on my patreon link in the description i'd like to take this time to thank my current patreons you guys are the best potential shinobis there are and help me be able to really do what i do on this channel i'd like to give special thanks to my chunin and jonin tier patrons Satoshi, Alpha Dog Studios, Benjamin T, Jeffrey Riddle, Yulia Namikaze, Wear My Crown, Daniel Hillier, Maracuzio, JT, Aaron McQuiston, Slow Days, Aaliyah Williams, Ryan, Johnny Boy Draws, LaCour, Weeb Ninja, Leo McIntyre, Joe, Daniel Hutchinson, Urgen, David DeBoer, Jaden Syria, Fabsy, Lost Illustrator, and Paul Hrubeck. Those of you new patrons are not on this list yet, but will be soon. Thank you guys very much as well, and just thank you all again very much. But one last thing is uh, just letting you guys know I started uploading again on my Kuzo channel as well and I uh, plan to have another video coming out here soon. So uh, that's my second channel where I do real time content and I have quite a few videos there already. So if you guys uh, are interested in that kind of stuff definitely go check out my second channel. That's also in the link in the description. But in any case, if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel, like as you see, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notified when each video comes out. And like always, guys, I hope you're having a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video.